Neoclassicism, the works of Dryden, Pope, Swift, Addison and John Gay, as well as many of the contemporaries, exhibit qualities of order, clarity, and stylistic decorum that were formulated in the major critical documents of the age. Dryden's An Essay of Dramatic Poesy, 1668, and Pope's Essay on Criticism, 1711. These works, forming the basis for modern English literary criticism, insist that nature is the true model and standard of writing. This nature of the Augustans, however, was not the wild, spiritual nature the Romantic poets would later idealize, but nature is derived from classical theory. A rational and comprehensible moral order in the universe, demonstrating God's providential design. The literary circle around Pope considered Homer preeminent among ancient poets in his descriptions of nature and concluded in a circuitous feat of logic that the writer who imitates Homer is also describing nature. For this follows the rules inductively based on the classics that Pope articulated in his essay on criticism. Those rules of old discovered, not devised, a nature still, but nature methodized. Particularly influential in the literary scene of the early 18th century were the two periodical publications by Joseph Addison and Richard Steele, The Tatler, 1709-11, and The Spectator, 1711-12. Both writers are ranked among the minor masters of English prose style and credited with raising the general cultural level of the English middle classes. A typical representative of the post-restoration mood, Steele was a zealous crusader for morality, and his stated purpose in the Tatler was to enliven morality with wit and to temper wit with morality. With the spectator, Addison added a further purpose, to introduce the middle-class public to recent developments in philosophy and literature and thus to educate the tastes. The essays are discussions of current events, literature, and gossip often written in a highly ironic and refined style. Addison and Steele helped to popularize the philosophy of John Locke and promote the literary reputation of John Milton, among others. Although these publications each only ran two years, the influence that Addison and Steele had on the contemporaries was enormous, and their essays often amounted to a popularization of the ideas circulating among the intellectuals of the age. With these widespread and influential publications, the literary circle revolving around Addison, Steele, Swift and Pope was practically able to dictate the accepted taste in literature during the Augustan age. In one of his essays for The Spectator, for example, Addison criticized the metaphysical poets for their ambiguity and lack of clear ideas, a critical stance which remained influential until the 20th century. The literary criticism of these writers often sought its justification in classical precedents. In the same vein, many of the important genres of this period were adaptations of classical forms, mock epoch, translation, and imitation. A large part of Pope's work belongs to this last category, which exemplifies the artificiality of neoclassicism more thoroughly than does any other literary form of the period. In his satires and verse epistles Pope takes on the role of an English Horace, adopting the Roman poet's informal candor and conversational tone and applying the standards of the original Augustan age to his own time, even addressing George II satirically as Augustus. Pope also translated the Iliad and the Odyssey, and, after concluding this demanding task, he embarked on the Dunciad, 1728, a biting literary satire.